it's just so light that by itself was the most life changing thing. Alex, how did you find Carnival? Uh, yeah, I, um, I'm kind of lucky that I did. It was kind of, I feel like happenstance almost because my life trajectory for, for health and well-being was going the opposite direction. It was, uh, cause I was, I was raised by a couple of hippies, I would call it from the sixties and their whole view of health and wellness was, you know, like kindness to animals. So we were vegetarian growing up there. It was me and my brother and sister. There were three of us. So that was many years vegetarian. Um, I didn't have meat until I was in my teens for the first time. It was really first burger. I remember it to this day. Like I'm like, Ooh, first burger. It was really good. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, um, as I went further into my teenage years, we kind of, we got harder into more plant-based eating to the point where, um, we started going more vegan. as it was like a family thing. We kind of went vegan and it was because of, I don't know if you're familiar with the book diet for a new America from, it was written in the nineties. Um, and, uh, it, it now, now looking back on it, like reading it or seeing any, any of the facts from it, it's so bad science and propagandist. I hate to say the word, but, um, back then we really bought into the whole, you know, plant food is better for you. It's better for the environment. It's ethically better for the animals. Um, and not only that, like we, you know, it's the eighties, mainly in nineties, like saturated fats bad for you. Don't eat it light on the fat. I remember one point uh, when I was a teenager, my mother, she's like describing how much fat we should get in a day. And she's like, you take a butter knife and you, you dip it in the margarine, you pull it out and that's all the fat you need for the day. And I'm now it's like, I'm like, that's insane. So we were, I kind of like turned really hardcore, staunch, uh, um, dogmatic vegan in my, like, I say around 95, like it went from vegetarianism to vegan. And, uh, when I was younger, like in, like around seven or eight, I kind of, I developed uh, asthma. So I got this severe asthma, which, um, up until recently, I, uh, thought I would be living my whole life with, um, another, like, so I'm going to go through a timeline here of all my, uh, my health issues and what has happened to them. Cause most of them are gone. Um, also, I had, uh, it ran in the family. We had this on my dad's side of the family. We had like chronic nosebleeds. So I get a nosebleed like once or twice a week, just at random. I'd sneeze and blood starts pouring out my nose or temperature change. Uh, like from hot, like I'm in the warm weather, you walk outside into the cold and your nose will bleed. Uh, my dad had that and he actually had his nose cauterized when he was very young and a way to deal with that. And my grandfather had it. So it was a family thing. Um, so I dealt with that my whole life. Um, and then, uh, so, and then I developed migraines at around age 13. Um, I just remember I was in eighth grade, my first migraine, I was sitting in class and I can't see anything. It was really weird. Um, uh, then like late teens, I'm a vegan at this point. I, uh, I noticed that this is going to be totally TMI, <laughs> but like I, I noticed that when I pooed, there was blood there. I felt an anal fissure, even in my teens. Uh, also dry scalp. Like I'm like, I would get this awful, like just dandruff and dry scalp. Um, and these are just like what I thought I, uh, the luck of the draw for genetics. I thought this was my genetics. This is what's going to happen to me as I, as I grow, as I have these health, these are my health problems that I got to deal with. How, how was your energy uh, when you were in your teens? So in my teens, um, my energy was okay. I'm like this teenage guy. I, I don't feel like the energy was at off. It gets off later and like in a few, like in my twenties, like I was having blood sugar issues by then. Uh, but, um, I went vegan and my migraines kind of stopped and I associated it with the dairy. Right. So, cause I'd eat cheese and the next day I'd have a migraine. So I'm like, Hey, the vegan diet a-okay with me because I have gotten rid of my migraines, right? So that was the one health benefit that I got from veganism. So like in my 20s, I, I got a very, um, very, uh, what's the word? I had a very energy, 
demanding job. I was very physical. Think of like a ro an aerobics instructor. I was, I was just dance instructor is what I was. Um, but like I was dancing eight hours a day, teaching people how to dance. And on this vegan diet, it got really hard. And I just assumed that's how I was. Like I would like I'd have these energy spikes and crashes. I, and I'd work for an hour and then I'd have no energy. And I didn't know it then, but now I now I know it's like I, I had a hypoglycemia at the time and I would get these insane spikes and crashes. And um, that was very that kind of, that bothered me a lot because like some days I'd be totally useless and I just couldn't think there was brain fog and I get these cold sweats and oh, it was awful. But um, I also in my 20s, I this when I developed digestion issues. So I started getting painful digestion and just chronic bloating and gas. <laughs> it's fun to talk about. But um, yeah, I mean, that's and as a 20 year old guy, I didn't I didn't think this was right. Um, so. But like, there's nothing I could do about it. I was eating the right way. Like I wasn't eating any animals. I was eating only plants and fiber. Like, why would I have digestion issues? Fiber is supposed to be good for you. Right. And low, low fat. Like I'm eating the years with growing up, like, like my late teen years with my parents was, I'll give you an idea of typical meal. Right. It was, and this is like, it's not like we were eating junk food vegan. My parents, we were very on it. We were, it's brown rice, like lentils or some kind of beans, or maybe tofu for protein. And then a lot of veggies, like we had broccoli and onions and stewed carrots and yams and squash and greens. Like, uh, I hadn't heard of kale yet at that point. So we didn't have any of that lovely, lovely vegetable, but uh, a lot of the other things. Uh, so that was like a typical diet. And for, for any oils or fats, it was, it was just like a little dribble of olive oil, just like, look, there's your oils. That's all you need. So I met my wife later on and she wasn't vegan and I don't know, I didn't really fault her. For like, I would have totally younger me, like early teeny, you're not vegan. What? Ah, uh, how dare you? But I don't know, I was a little more mature, like in my late twenties, I, I didn't mind that she, she was vegetarian. So that was fine. She had eggs and, uh, uh, and when she got pregnant, I didn't really, I didn't push any veganism onto her. I'm like, her body probably knows better. So I'm, I'm kind of glad that I did that, but, um, my health was also like this is the point i started gaining weight so my dancing career up until i met my wife i'm like 165 170 pounds the whole time because i'm just like exercising and um even though i i suspect i was getting uh insulin resistant at that time i was starting to develop it because like i'm just having carbs and carbs and carbs and carbs but <laughs> um yeah we kind of joke me and my wife is one of our first kid i gained like I had that sympathy weight gain and it's really, I stopped dancing at that time. And I just put on like through a few years, I put on 30 pounds. I like my, or 40 pounds. Sorry. I topped out, um, by the time I was 40 with my, well, I'll get to this, my, uh, midlife crisis. But by the time I was 40, I, uh, I was 210 pounds. So I was much larger. Um, but, uh, so yeah, so I developed psoriasis, uh, in, the, in my thirties. Um, and I started to get that malar rat, you know, malar rashes, that butterfly rash that people get. I, I got a butterfly rash, like, you know, the lupus rash. Um, it was start, it, it just started here under the, the eyebrows and then it would like kind of spread and it would be like a psoriasis sort of rash and dry skin and it just got worse as I got more into my thirties. Um, and I was like, what's going on with my face? Like it was, that was kind of concerning, like this very visible aspect. And then, yeah, I developed so the psoriasis I got, I got these little tiny patches of psoriasis on my trunk every now and then. Um, and there were times where it flared up and it got bigger. Um, so, and, and here I am vegan and uh, there was this book that I read how to heal psoriasis and it mainly talked about nightshades and eliminating nightshades from your diet, which I tried. I wasn't like a junk food vegan. I'm like, we're eating organic whole foods throughout my life and into like my marriage with my wife and my kids. And 
I even raised my first kids um, very organic and like we're trying to do as healthy as possible, though I didn't really push veganism onto them, um, which was, I feel, as, I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> um, so then comes my, uh, this is like, we're getting up to my midlife, 40, 40th birthday. Um, sometime after my 40th birthday, there's like, imagine this, like, this is bright, sunny day. And like, you're out there with your kids, they're jumping in the pool, we have an above ground pool. So they're jumping from the trampoline into the above ground pool. And they're like, Hey, dad, join us. So, so I join them and I jump in and we have a great time. And then at one point, one of my kids runs up to me and they're like, Dad, check out this picture I got. And I look at the their phone where they took a picture and I'm looking, I'm like, who's that fat guy jumping in the pool? Right. And why is he wearing my shorts? <laughs> and I I had never seen myself so overweight before. Uh, and it was that picture not recognizing me and my guts hanging over my shorts. And I'm like shocked. Like this was a big aha moment for me. I was shocked at how overweight I was. I mean, I was 210, I was 40 pounds heavier than just a few years ago. And it was crazy. So that moment is like the aha moment. I got to get my life together. I got to do something. Um, so what had happened like up around, up, right before that happened, right before my midlife crisis, I have this midlife crisis, right before then, I'm having all this bloating and gas and um, I wanted to do something about it. I knew my digestion was bad. So um, I'm looking through all these vegan sources for fixing and healing digestion and there's nothing. And the only thing I can come up with is dairy, like yogurt and kefir. So I started, uh, that's when I stopped being vegan is right before, like sometime before my 40th birthday, I was like trying to deal with this gas and bloating and painful digestion. I can't, stress how painful it was sometimes like I would eat and then it's just pain for hours afterwards sometimes just uh and yeah it just doubled over in pain at times and gassy it was just awful so <laughs> anyway so um so I start doing dairy again and actually the kefir and yogurt help somewhat not much but you know it, it helps a little bit um so I, I did that for a couple of years and it never really got that much better until one day I, I decided that I was going to try eating meat again because my digestion was so bad. And I just like the, all the vegan, like dogmatic arguments just didn't hold up anymore just because I was in so much pain from food. And I, I had to try something. I was so desperate. I'm like, I'm going to eat meat. And it had been decades since I ate anything and I didn't even know what to try or what to eat. So we, my wife made me up some, a chicken breast, you know, something lean, but I remember eating it. And like minutes afterwards, I felt amazing. It was so interesting. And I just like a buzz from food, like just feeling good for hours afterwards. I don't know why chicken breast would do it, but, um, May, I, I don't know what I was missing in my diet being vegan for because I was vegan for a total of 14 years there. So I went vegan from 95 to about 2010. And I was staunch, hardcore, organic. Um, sometimes I, I even went into raw food vegan. Uh, yeah, I really pushed it. I uh, was very I believed in it. I mean, I was raised that way. I believed it was the way that the world would heal and all that, all the stuff. Um, the, um, <clears throat> 40th birthday, my midlife crisis happens and I decide I got to get in shape. This isn't, this wasn't like health related at all. This was vanity. I saw a fat picture of me where I was shocked. So I'm decided I'm going to get into shape. So, and the only thing that I could come up with is, you know, there's, there's a class of people out there who do it all the time and uh, bodybuilders, right? They, they nail down their diet, they get in shape. So I wanted to follow that. So I got into the flexible dieting where you count your macros. That's where I started. And I was doing it like bodybuilder style, I would call it. You know, I was doing like lean meats, lean chicken, fish, lean red meats, and uh, lots of veggies like yams, brown rice. So like it, it was it was just like my vegan diet, 
but I just extended into meats and I counted everything, all the macros, all the calories. Um, but I was very good at it and it worked really well. Um, I slimmed way down. I lost 30 pounds in, gosh, I'd say eight months, which was pretty good. Um, now that's all it did is it made me lose weight. Um, I still had blood sugar issues and it had become more noticeable. Um, and with this way of eating where you're counting all your calories and you're not really satiated ever, I'm, I was hungry all the time, 24 seven. Like I, I looked forward to eating so bad. I'm like, I get to eat. And then I had eaten and then I'm just hungry still. And I did that. I only did that for eight, that eight months. Um, luckily because I had, I had a great boss who was into bodybuilding at the time. I just started a new job and she was doing keto. This went about the time keto started gaining in popularity and she talked me into it. And that was a big changer for me, like e incorporating more fats and, um, and just getting rid of all the sweet carbohydrates or uh, carbohydrates in general. Um, so I really enjoyed keto. It what I mean, it got rid of my hypoglycemia. It kept me from gaining weight. Um, it also took care of a lot of the bloating. I'd say I, I thought I was, when I went keto, I got rid of a lot of bloating and digestive issues. I still had some, but I was like, this is a win. I did it. I fixed it right in my mind. Little did I know how much farther I could go. So like I, I'm in my mind, I fixed it. I love keto and I'm not gonna, I, I think I'm gonna eat this way forever in my mind. So that was like seven years ago. <laughs> so I was keto for six years straight. Um, and I was pretty good about it. I did clean keto. I did dirty. I, I ate dirty sometimes, you know, with some of the junk foods and all that. Um, but I, I, all these health issues that I mentioned before in, in my young life, they never went away. Um, I always had that rash. I always had dry scalp and, uh, psoriasis and asthma, my asthma. Now I want to say something about my asthma. It's like my whole life, it was out of control. Like I always had severe asthma as a kid. I was in the hospital many times because it was just so out of control. My inhaler didn't work. I had a nebulizer. I had all kinds of medication like, uh, I don't, theophylline. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's like a stimulant. Well, for me, it was a stimulant. Like I, they give it to me as a kid and I just be bouncing off the walls, but it helped me breathe. Um, not a great medication, but, um, uh, it turns out I was like, I found out I was allergic to prednisone, which is the main medication they give to kids for, for that type of inflammation of the lungs and other things. But it just, I break out in hives and I get worse inflammation. So I can't take prednisone, but, um, so I ended up because I couldn't take prednisone, I ended up just using my rescue inhaler a lot. And in my, it's like, it got slightly better and then it got slightly worse. So in my twenties, my asthma got better. I was exercising all the time and I would use my rescue inhaler once a week, maybe, maybe twice a week. And then as I got into my thirties, it's four times a week, like every day I have to, I get an asthma attack. And there were a couple of times I still had it, my wife driving me to the hospital because like, it's not working. And, um, and through this journey through eating a ketogenic diet, also just asthma, still all these health problems. It, I thought I was going to live with all of that forever. I was just my genetics. I was stuck with it and I just got to deal with it. So what I, uh, the, the reason I stuck with keto, keto is just like, I felt more energy. So it took care of my hypoglycemia. Of course. Um, I have more energy constantly all the time. It's great. I highly recommend it for that. It got rid of some of my bloating and I thought I got rid of all of my bloating. I was part of a, a you, there was this, you or not YouTube, um, Facebook group I found called keto gains. Cause I kind of went through it through a bodybuilding sort of mentality. I don't know if you're familiar with the keto gains group. I think, um, they, uh, I think they're the ones that started element, you know, the, um, electrolyte element I think they started that if I'm not mistaken, 
but anyways, um, so they have this protocol and their, their whole, like, you want to stay lean and bodybuilding. You, you focus on your protein, low carbs, like under 25 grams, usually of net carbs. And then you use fat as a lever. This is what they say. Use fat as a lever. You get more or less fat, depending on how lean you want to get. Um, and that was fine. I was still hungry a lot. It never really, I thought I'd just be hungry the rest of my life, honestly, which I was like prepared mentally to do. Just be hungry forever. It'll be all right. I'll just be in shape and hungry. Um, so uh, when I was in, this is another thing. When I was in keto is when I developed uh, gum disease. I got gingivitis in, and I actually during those six years of keto, I got gum disease and it was very rapid in the front here. I've had to have gum grafting in the front and in the back. It was, it was pretty brutal through anyways, I'm reading the keto gains group regularly. And I'm just like looking at their posts on Facebook and uh, I see people start to mention eating carnivore. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's keto. It's carnivore, a carnivore, you eat a carnivore diet, but vegetables are good for you and fiber. You need fiber. It's good for you. So, but I see people mention it. And so like one day, this was last year. I remember the day it was April 30th, last 2023, I'm surfing YouTube and I come across a video by Dr. Anthony Chafee, um, plants are trying to kill you. Uh, like his talk, plants are trying to kill you. And you know, it's a kind of clickbaity title, notwithstanding, I watched it and it was just fantastic. And it, it's just like, he made so much sense that I'm like, yeah, why don't I do this? So that was last year. So May 1st, the next day I started strict carnivore. Oh, well, not strict. I started carnivore and uh, I've been on it ever since. Uh, so that's like 17 months now, almost 18 months. Um, and uh, so I'm going, I'm, I'm, I realize as I like the first few days, like all the bloating that I thought I got rid of, there was more and it went completely away. I was just flabbergasted, like how thin I can feel and how flat my stomach feels because there's no bloating and there's no painful digestion. Like I would digest and it would still be mild pain. And I was like, I was like, I, I was fine with it because it was way better from before. And I was like, I'm just gonna be keto forever. But then I start this carnivore diet. Like I'm like, and, and I originally started, I'm like, I'm gonna do 30 days because it's kind of crazy that you're only eating meat. It's so crazy. I'm gonna do it for 30 days though. Give it a try, you know, a little experiment. So I, the first week, the, the amount of bloating that went away and the amount of, gas like there's no like no gas on a carnivore diet it, it was amazing like bizarre but um and no painful digestion man what a win so i'm like i'm just gonna keep going with this so uh i did carnivore um a few more months and i realized my scalp my dry scalp's gone i don't have dandruff and my I hadn't had a bloody nose in a couple of months. Like, what's this? Like, I have bloody noses chronically my whole life. Really weird. Um, and all my psoriasis that I had patches that consist that persisted through keto disappeared. Like, wow. I is this because I'm eating this uh, diet? This um, which I now know to be the proper human diet, but um. It's just all gone. I was amazed. And it had taken it took me a year. So like the following May, which this this past May, I'm sitting there and I realize that I hadn't had an asthma attack in almost a year. And that's the I didn't dawn on me because like I was so used to it being a part of my life that it was like so background. Like I would just hit my inhale, I hard breathe, hit my inhaler, and just keep doing whatever I'm doing. And so that's the, it's just so light. That by itself was the most life-changing thing. No asthma and no like serious, like not, not, it's not even like I went from serious asthma to light asthma. I went from serious asthma to nothing. It was amazing. I like, I, to, my mind is totally blown by that. Like it was the infl. I just suspect it's all the inflammation from all the carbohydrates I was eating. And it's just crazy. Uh, that to me, that's just nuts that like that serious part of my life is just gone now. It's just completely life changing. I that's awesome. Like at at some point, did it kind of feel like 
I've just been cheated all my life. I, exactly. That is exactly how I felt. And like anytime I hear the word vegan now, sometimes my I just like, Ugh. like I feel I was so cheated out of like this illusion of of health that was never there because I was on the vegan diet and I saw the only health benefit I saw was no migraines and all this other stuff got worse. And I still have no migraines because I don't eat cheese. So I, <laughs> I said, that's my trigger is dairy. Usually um, I can still eat butter. That doesn't cause it. But I found that if I have yogurt or cheese, then even just because some people eat yogurt or cheese on a carnivore diet. So I did eat yogurt last year and it triggered a migraine. And I'm like, yep, still there. So um, yeah, it's just it is so life changing I, I that's why i want i wanted to share this you know it's mm. so so big <laughs> day day to day how do you eat these days oh so uh, a lot of ribeyes <laughs> and a lot of ground beef and butter and so like when i started i did a lot of steak and i think it was I still had this like keto gains, sort of like more protein, less fat mentality, even though I was eating more fat than before. And it, I did that for a while and I, I didn't really focus too much on, I, I, I ate a ribeye and it's very fatty and I ate it, it was good. But this year I've done this experiment with myself. I call, I, I call it my um, most delicious bite experiment. <laughs> and I get so like I'll do it like with ground beef and butter and I'll try and get the most the best tasting combination of fat to protein and I'll just eat that and I'm surprised at how little I have to eat when I do that like I'm just like a quarter pound of beef and some half a stick of butter it ends up being or maybe even a stick of butter so it's a lot of butter to a little bit of ground beef and uh and the like and it's just I'm full for hours, um, which is something, okay, this is the other thing that I didn't talk about is the, the constant hunger is not just like from not eating. Like when I was eating all I could in my teen years and it's all carbohydrates, I was still hungry all the time. I would just be stuffed. Like I'd be like, my belly's all expanded. I could go out and I, it's like some restaurant where they have vegan food obviously that I could eat and I just stuff myself and like I'm like unbuttoning my pants because my belly's so full and I'm sitting there like oh I'm stuffed but I could still eat I'm still hungry I still had an appetite right so I think that's the other major life change that this has done is I feel satiated so you have two two forms of fullness you have the the rugae that expands in your stomach right and you just like feel like like you have a lot in there or this satiation, which I had never really experienced until this last year, even on keto, because on keto, I was trying to be, I was still trying to like keep my, my frame slim. And I ate a lot of veggies. I still ate a lot of like, uh, some of my diet was all uh, like cauliflower rice and ground beef mixed together. And there's my keto meal for breakfast. And and there's a lot of fiber in that and you get bloated and you the rugae just expands and I would never get that satiated feeling that, and I really didn't even know it that well. I did not know that satiated feeling until this last year when I eat as much fat as I can with a little bit of protein to make it taste good. And I would tell everybody to like any advice I'd give to somebody, if you're doing this, eat as much fat as you can and you need the protein to balance it out. You can't like the stick of butter eh, by itself but you mix it up and it's absolutely just one delicious, amazing bite. Your brain sings as you're eating it. Like you get all those hormones just flooding and, um, and then you're just full and it's not even like your, your stomach's not expanded. You have a little bit of food in there, but your body's like, okay, I'm good. And with that satiation comes a level of happiness that I had never known before. It's really interesting. Um, there's nothing quite like the different realizing there's a difference in feeling like it's the uh, it's I'm immense. about to explode versus, uh, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I feel comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and, uh, so when I first started, like with all these ribeyes, I'd eat the fatty part and sometimes I'd feel like 
the satiated feeling and almost I eat too much almost and I'd feel sick. So, but yeah, and I eat all kinds of stuff and now I don't even, I don't like chicken anymore. <laughs> it's too lean. Um, so yeah, it's, um, interesting, very interesting. And the whole, uh, journey from being vegan for 14 years in, into now is just kind of mind blowing for me because I was, I, like I said before, I was so dogmatic about it. Um, and occasionally I'll, I'll go on YouTube and I'll search, um, vegan videos, like what new research is out there? Cause like, I don't want to be as dogmatic as I used to be. So I'm trying to keep an open mind with things. And so I'll go and there's like, there's nothing new. It's veganism. I feel has run its course. <laughs> it's dying out. Maybe not. I don't know. But like that, what, like if I, I'll, I'll go in and I'll, I'll see these vegan videos and I'll try and watch them. And I'm like, I was there. I lived it. I know your arguments and they're not good. They're, they're just like self-righteous, aggrandizing. Like I'm so good because I'm so good to the planet. It's, um, we can't like existing on this planet requires us to use resources that will be taken from other beings, um, uh, like other people or, or the space we live. Like my house is, my house is built on five acres. And like before there was a house there, I'm sure there were animals here and, and that's just life. Like you have to, for you to exist, you have to, you have to like, you cause, you cause suffering of others just by being here. And that's just the way it is. And it's okay. It's just life. We all struggle. We all struggle. So, um, yeah, I think veganism is very short sighted when it comes to that. It's like, they're focusing on the big, like the one first thing, the big animal, you have to kill it. It's murder. And I'm not going to do that. And sure, that's the, the heart's in the right place. Your heart's in the right place with that. But um, it's very short sighted. And, and uh, it, it's, it's just wrong. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've read um, Lear Keith's book, The Vegetarian Myth. Um, just a fantastic book on all the aspects of that, on, um, on how, uh, eating plant-based is bad for your health, is bad for the environment and it's bad for the animals all around. It's just bad. And then those are the three prongs of veganism that I believed in. It was good for my health. It was great for the environment and great for animals. And that's just not true. And that's, um, Right. Yeah. It, it seems to be bad in every way. It's bad in every way. And I don't, I don't want to disparage anybody for trying to do right in the world or trying to be a good person. That's all we, most of us try to do that. Um, but it's just too short sighted. And so, um, a, a bold statement here, you and I, Dave, as carnivores are better vegans than the plant-based eaters out there. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyways right so <laughs> ha, what kind of feedback have you received from your family i mean this is a this is a complete about face right total about face and so my brother he's still vegan um i i just haven't told him <laughs> i love my brother we don't live very close we live a little not that close we're like two hours away from each other but i just have never uh spoke to him about it and Maybe I will someday, but he has all the health issues that I have. And I really want to be able to talk to him about that. But he's he's way more staunch dogmatic than I am. Um, yeah, uh, my parents, they I they've kind of woken up to it a little bit. Um, another thing is like, here's something that when we were vegan and I was young, I was in high school. My dad was 44 and he got colon cancer on this amazing, which, which people say you shouldn't happen on this diet. The doctor was flabbergasted when we told her our diet. She's like, well, that doesn't make sense at 44. He was young and he had colon cancer had his colon out. And yeah. Um, brown rice and green veggies every day, like fiber galore. Yeah. So like I was saying before, I go on these YouTube videos and I try and like find out the new information out there. There's really not much. And sometimes you come across people who peddle the same old information that of which I have learned just through my experience is wrong. Like I just the other day, I'm, I'm watching this well-known doctor and they're talking to this dietitian who says, well, 
I don't agree with the carnivore diet because fiber is good and red meat's bad. And I'm, and that's, that was their argument. And I'm, I'm like, there's no new research in that argument. You're not convincing anybody with that. If, if you had a vegan friend that was suffering and you, you were going to suggest, why don't you try doing this? How would you, how would you broach this subject with them? So that's a hard one because um, I, w I would have to tell them my whole experience. And I think my what gives me a little credibility is like just how long I was vegan for and how I believed in it. I was like I said, I uh, anybody who ate meat was evil, you know, <laughs> and uh, and now I've come totally around and I've learned better and I'm wiser for it. Um, you know, funny thing, I also, um, while I was doing keto, I'm like, could I, could I go back to veganism on keto? And, um, I tried and it was a disaster. So, so, um, you know, they have, uh, there was this one Facebook group called vegan keto made simple that I followed and they have like all these vegan keto recipes. And I really, it's really not the fat. That's the, like, like fat's important. But I also think the absence of fiber is extremely important. Um, fiber and me don't get along, I've learned. And any fiber that I get just turns into a nightmare of pain, bloating, and gas. And, event like, and eventually, like I'm sure my um, inflammation would come back. To convince someone who who is vegan to give this a try, you would really have to go through your whole history and explain look this yeah. is everything that happened to me i was exactly where you are yeah um, and and this is why i'm wary about um like kind of bashing veganism because like the person's not doing wrong they're trying to do the right thing it's ju it's just like you gotta be educated on um how it actually works like going to deeper levels of of farming and animals and like like me, when I bought like the house we're in, I we bought when I was vegan and I had this dream of like it's on acreage. I had this dream of doing like farming out here and you learn that death is required and killing things is required. Like you cannot subsist without it. Um, not not as a farmer, just as living like you. That's a it's a farm lesson. What? Uh, I, what I, I heard this joke the other day. What do you call a vegan who starts farming? A meat eater. So, um, uh, yeah, because, uh, I tried so many times out in my, 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 my garden, my rows my, of, um, my field. Um, like you, you'd plant something and animals will come and eat it and there's nothing you can do. Like, what are you going to do? Kill them off? Like, that's what, you have to do if you want to grow these things. Um, I have one vivid memory. I, I, we have a tractor and I'm plowing the field and if there's grass, it's like grasslands and I'm plowing the field. And all of a sudden I see this family of rabbits just like psh, flee in front of the tractor. And I'm like, Oh crap. I just destroyed their home. I'm killing them all. Cause they don't have a home and they were babies. And so their mother's not going to find them and their home is destroyed and they're all going to die. And, that's the reality of farming really is like you destroy the habitat. Like if you live on grass, like we have wetlands here and grasslands, like there's prairie. And if you farm that you're destroying their habitat, you're killing all the, like you're destroying the place that they live in their food source. You're, so you're killing massive, like native sp species right there. Um, not only that, when you till the soil, you degrade it every time. And like, I mean, this is no secret. Topsoil degradation is a real problem. You know, um, until you like, there's nothing left. You can't grow plants in it anymore. We have one area we gardened for three years and then all of a sudden it won't grow anything anymore. So we like, you know, you have to buy manure or something or um, some kind of fertilizer. Uh, and uh, like, that's, that's the reality of it. You get, you get much better results for the planet, if you just grow like one cow and kill it yourself, and then like you don't have to kill thousands of other species out there because something has to die for us to live. It just has to. There's no secret to that.
So anyways, yeah. So, and, and you, those ruminants, they build the topsoil back. Like you have a ruminant animal. We have, mm. we have alpaca out there now and they just eat and they build the topsoil. We just let them roam and like, it just, the soil gets better and better with time and you have topsoil because of it. And you don't even need to farm it. Now it's great for growing grass and wild life lives out there. We have beaver out there. We have, we have coyotes, we have eagles that commonly come in. We have rabbits, we have all kinds of stuff lives out there. And if we were to farm it now, we would destroy the habitat for all the prairie be gone, you know, out, out here, like our acreage but the grasslands be gone and it's just farmland and it's just like, it becomes sterile over time. So having these ruminant animals just create the topsoil and then us eating our proper human diet, just it's, it fixes it all. It's like, um, it's just the way it, it should be, honestly. All the results you've had, including the asthma, like the, there's, um, there's no going back for you? No. And there's another result I really didn't talk about, which is huge. And a lot of people mention it kind of like their mood is improved. Well, I wanted to quantify that, like eating and it requires the heavy, the high fats, like you got to eat the high fats. And then when you're like satiated, my mood is, I would call it you're 20% happier in your life. Like that's the quantification right there. 20% happier. Do you want to be 20% happier? You have this base level of happiness from eating the sad diet or plant-based diet or, you know, whatever you're going through. And if you, if you change it just a little bit, high saturated fat, like just 20% happier. How amazing. That's what I feel anyways. I've always been this happy go lucky person. So I've never really had bouts of depression or anything, but, um, I'm even happier now in the last year than I ever have been. It's amazing. That's awesome. Um, so Alex, how can people reach out to you? Uh, the only thing I have is uh, Twitter or X, whatever they call it now. Uh, I put it in my name there. It says Alex at uh, mind, mind blur. No worries. So I'll, uh, I'll link to that in the show notes. Um, yeah, Alex anybody wants to reach out if any if there's any vegans out there who want to reach out and have any questions or concerns or wants to debate or whatever, I don't care. Just reach out. It's on Twitter and X. Just message me. It's fine. Yeah. Sure. I'll I'll link to that in the show notes. Thank you so much yeah. for coming on and sharing your oh, story, you're Alex. Really yeah. appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank you for having me.